I took it all apart, pulled the radio out. I wanted to know how is there a radio inside of a raccoon? Today I'm going to have more life lessons from the car wizard that you can only find on BinWiki. I'm going to describe to you guys how the car wizard came about. Not necessarily how I got the name car wizard, but what are the things that led up to me opening my own shop and becoming the car wizard? Where did I get my knowledge? How did I start doing things? It actually starts in my childhood. Both of my parents could also verify this fact that a lot of the toys they bought me little electronics or mechanical toys were always ended up broken, pulled apart into pieces, down to all their little pieces and parts. And for the longest time, my dad was like, why do you do this? We spent a lot of money on these things, not for you to just put them into pieces and organize the parts, and now it's useless. And it really was a lot of agony for them for many years. Even in my early teen years, I remember a story where my dad had bought a brand new lawnmower, a push mower. Well, he hadn't even used it yet. It was sitting in the shed. I went to get it. I wanted to see what's behind the cylinder head. So I got some ratchet and wrenches and things, pulled the cylinder head off. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, I got clumps of grass and put them into the, where the piston is in the cylinder. Put, tried to put the head back on and I didn't know. I was like, oh, that was cool. My dad came out a couple days later and went to try to start it and just grass all over. He was like, well, why did it do that? Finally, he went and looked around and saw all the bolts loose on the cylinder head, and he was like, what, what happened? And at the time, I was a kid, I lied. I said, well, maybe you, maybe you bought it and you hadn't even used it yet. Maybe it came that way. And for a couple of days, he bought it. He's like, maybe, what the heck? I don't, I don't remember seeing that. Finally, he put two and two together, and he came up to me and he goes, you did this, didn't you? And I was shaking. I was scared. I was like, yeah, I did it. He got it fixed, and I had to mow the grass for the rest of the summer with no, no allowance, no pay, no nothing. And it really sucked, but I deserved it. But it's a lot of stories like that leading up to me becoming mechanically inclined or interested in mechanics. I guess it takes a lot of destruction before you can start doing construction and fixing things. I have two other crazy stories in my childhood. One of them was where... I had a little radio, it was like a raccoon, and it had a radio built into its stomach. My mom bought it for me, thought it'd be really cool. I took it all apart, pulled the radio out. I wanted to know, how is there a radio inside of a raccoon? And it obviously ruined it. The second one was that my uncle had bought me a Teddy Ruxpin at the time. You guys remember Teddy Ruxpin. It took cassette tapes in the back. And at the same time, I also had an old Commodore computer that took cassette tapes. I took one of their tapes and put it into the Teddy Ruxpin, and it made it almost like it was demonically possessed. It did all kind of crazy things, and then it locked up, and it was ruined. I completely ruined the toy. It wasn't even one week old. And my dad was telling at the time, or it was his brother-in-law, like, I told you not to buy him this type of stuff. He just breaks everything. I don't know what's wrong with him. Obviously, in hindsight, my dad understands what was happening, and he's glad that it happened the way it did, but at the time, it was very frustrating. As I got into high school, I started learning to work on small engines. I took small engine classes. I took auto shop, all the automotive things that were to offer in high school. And I started to learn that you need to be able to put things back together. You need to figure out why things broke. There was a whole other world, and I knew I could take things apart. I need to know, learn how to fix them. And I, I learned a lot of that through there. The second step was going into the United States Army. That's where I use some skills I learned in high school, and also they put you through mechanic school in the military. And I worked on Bradley fighting vehicles, Humvees, two and a half tons, five tons, Hemets, and occasionally M1 Abrams tanks. Most of them million or multi-million dollar vehicles, some of them not so expensive, but it really trained me to not only now to how to fix things, but to do them efficiently in a set amount of time, when you get into a bind, you can't figure out how something comes apart. I had mentors there that showed me this is how this works, this is how that works. It started to build the repertoire, the mechanic abilities. It's things I still reach for, for today. Even today, I remember, I remember this 20 years ago, 25 years ago. This is how this or that worked. The things I still use today. 
After I got out of the military, it wasn't too much many years down the road that I met Mrs. Wizard. And like you guys just heard on VinWiki, I worked at a jail. So I got a lot of abilities to deal with unruly people and how to judge people in a way, I guess. But also, I worked at a machine shop, an aircraft machine shop for many years. I learned how to operate machines, how to manufacture or make my own parts, how to repair broken parts. And also, there was lots of parts that had rivets and things. I learned how to drill out rivets, how to drill things out without damaging the holes. There's a lot of skills that I learned in those three or four years at a machine shop that I use today. And it really, like some of my mechanics today, there would be rivets in a door for a window regulator or something, and they try to drill them out, and they're, you know, the drill's walking, and how do you do this? And I, I go through and show them, and I get it out and get them all out in like two minutes, and he's, they're like, I've been trying this for an hour. How did you do that? It's because I drilled out thousands of rivets in the aircraft industry. I know how these work, and you wouldn't think a lot of these things... To be a mechanic, you need to go to mechanic school, but there's so many things I know today that I learned from jobs that had nothing to do with auto mechanics. I use them today to strengthen the auto mechanic skill set. After that, I did get back into the auto industry. I worked at a cartage service or a hauling service. I worked on their cranes, their trucks. It wasn't too much longer at that. I worked at a local shop near where we lived, working on automobiles, trucks, all those things. These guys were mechanics for 40 years or more. They were master certified Chrysler mechanics. One guy was a Ford mechanic. And I just absorbed all the knowledge that they had. While I was working, they would say, this is how this works. This is how that works. It's just what you can expect out of this, out of that. And there was a couple other mechanics in the shop that were with us. They were just there to get a paycheck. They didn't care. But I was like, no, I know these guys have something that's very valuable in their minds. And I want that transferred to me. So I would just, I'd ask questions. I would constantly, what have you experienced with this? What have you experienced with that? Anyways, now we're finally leading up to the name Car Wizard. I decided to open my own shop. It was be called Omega Auto Clinic. And I was like, where am I going to get customers from? How does this even work? I did start to get a few customers here or there, but there was this person who contacted me we kind of knew of each other through the internet and we tried to purchase, each of us tried to purchase the one same car. It was a 240D Mercedes and that person's name is Tyler Hoover from Hoover's Garage. After he found out that I could fix cars, had my own little shop going, he said, hey, I've got this used car dealership. I'm trying to sell these cars and the people around me are really, I mean, the bills, the things are trying to charge me are insane. If you can work out a deal, I'll bring you cars. Give me a, a special rate. I can keep your shop full all the time. I said, hey, why not? And from there, that's how I met Tyler. There was multiple incidents where I would fix things from the skill sets that I've earned years past. That even Tyler would be like, how did you do that? I don't understand. This should have been some massive job, but you were able to get in there, this and that. And finally, he coined the term. He said, you're some kind of car wizard. I don't, I don't know how you do this or that. He said, I'm happy for it. I'm going to keep bringing you more cars. And from there, it just grew and grew and grew. And it's to the point, uh, like two or three years later, that one can't exist without the other. We were feeding off of each other. He had started his own YouTube channel. I hadn't started one yet. Because I was able to help him keep his ball rolling, he was able to keep his YouTube channel going. And it was just this very symbiotic relationship. It was very nice. It worked for both of us so well. And one day he said, you need your own YouTube channel, Car Wizard. And I was like, I don't, I don't want cameras in my shop. I don't, I don't see how that could work. I don't see how that could be beneficial. He showed me some of the money he was making monthly and it wasn't very big at the time, but I was like, what the heck? I had just moved into the new building, which is the building I'm in now. And me and Mrs. Wizard said, let's give this a try. Let's try this YouTube thing. Maybe it'll turn into something. And the rest is history. Here we are, the Car Wizard channel, over a million subscribers. And Tyler has brought me on many of his adventures, car trek, car issues. I'm sitting here today on VinWiki, Ed Bolian's own channel, because so many years ago, 
I had met Tyler Hoover. So very thankful for him, for where I'm at today, and also very thankful for the entire experience. So now you guys know, how did I become the car wizard? And that pretty much explains it all. When you get a ticket, it might look something like this, but the first thing that you need to do is take a picture of that ticket and send it to 305 305. That will get the ticket clinic on your case immediately. They've got brick and mortar offices in Georgia, Florida, and California, but they can help you find a ticket no matter where you get it in the United States by helping you find a local attorney that will do everything they can to help you avoid costly fines, insurance premium increases, points on your license, risk of suspension, even jail time. They've helped me out with this ticket and many others and a lot of my friends as well. So check them out now at the link in the description below or again, text your ticket it to 305-305 to get the ticket clinic on your case. They are the perfect partner in your fight against any speeding ticket.